Now that we solved this piece of geometry to a near adequate level, we can press numpad slash to get out of local mode, and we can look at our initial mesh that we attempted to solve just using modifiers, and we see that it was almost successful except it just wasn't. And there's a few things we could do to help. For one, I would recommend turning off these three modifiers in order to simplify the stack so we can actually go in and make cuts in edit mode. If we attempted to use blue box with this, with these modifiers present, it's just going to be a massive slowdown, but we see that after disabling them, it's actually a lot more easy to deal with. So we're just getting in and just cutting a few loops just to help our geometry out as far as the solving is happening with these particular modifiers to see if we could improve it. So that's as much as we need to do to assist. So we activate bevel, we activate triangulate, and then we activate subdivision. And we see that this actually looks a lot better. If we were to press Alt B and we turned off wireframes and you had to ask someone, hey, which of these is solved correctly? Which one is it? You know, we spin it around a couple of times. Which one of these was solved correctly? Can you tell which one's which? What about now? Can you tell which one is which, which one was solved good and which one wasn't? Let's press Alt V and turn on wireframe. Let's turn them back off and rotate it again. I was about to start pointing out some of the differences that make it very obvious which one is which, but anyways, I'm not trying to turn this video into a carnival game. So what I wanted to do was talk about quad remesher before closing out this video. So let's turn on viewport overlays, Alt V, wireframe to see what we have going on. And I'm going to shift D duplicate this mesh over because this was the best that we were able to do with just solving it automatically using modifiers in Blender. So let's actually toggle these off. And I toggled them off in the wrong order, which is going to cause some speed hiccups. But now we're actually back to the initial geometry that we transformed into this and also transformed into that. And so since I have quad remesher installed, let's give it a try. Before that though, I'm going to press Q and we're going to sharpen, which will mark the sharp edges. Meaning that whenever we go to Q remesher, we can actually choose use normal splitting and let's try it with adaptive. So I'm just gonna click remesh and hope for the best. Oh man, that's some insane geometry. Wow, why did I even solve it? <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but seriously, why did I even solve this? That's actually very, very nice. Let's press Q and go to bevel. And I'm gonna press three to add a perimeter bevel because this has no perimeter bevels protecting the edges, which means that when we add subdivision, it's just gonna eat this thing for launch. If we press control two, we can now subdivide it. And let's actually turn off the bevel. And if we press alt V and toggle off the wireframe, this is what we're actually getting. So I'm gonna select everything and we're just going to mark it as sharp and unmark it to just remove all marking. So this is now our quad remesh. This is our manually solved using modifiers. And this is our manually solved by hand mesh. So I think they all actually look pretty good. If we press Alt V and we look at the wireframe, we see that you know the quad remesh result definitely has a much better polygon distribution. In fact, I'm curious in how it solved this corner area. Maybe having a five star, maybe having a uh, five sided um, pole here isn't the best solution. Just all in all, but you know, you can't argue with the results. So let's press Alt V and let's put bevel back into the mix. So now we have bevel actually protecting this area. And let's also put a triangulate because we introduce n-gons with the bevel in this case. So we hit triangulate and let's place it actually right after the bevel. So that way it triangulates whatever the bevel creates when it comes to dealing with these particular boundaries. And if we press Alt V and we jump out, we see that, you know, our attempts to protect the boundary using the bevel has resulted in complexity that has resulted in lumps. So we could actually go in and just toggle that off. Triangulate could remain on because unless it's detecting a minimum of five, it's not going to do anything. If we change it to four, we see that it does something. But if we leave it at five, it could stay on or not. But really let's press Alt V and look at this again. And so I ask you the user, you know, which one of these look the best? Uh, personally, I like having the manual control of dealing with every side's particular bevel amount whenever it comes to having polygon distribution. So I have a, my particular way of solving it. However, you know, quad remesh can always um, teach us a few things about simplicity and geometry. I mean, if we go in and just select some loops, we see that 
we're able to select all these loops in a chain so there's no spiraling happening i mean that's a spiral but really what can you do when everything's continuous but right here we see that all the way up these are single loops and they're not spiraling which was kind of the big thing with q remesher and zbrush that made it such a meme but i guess that's it i just wanted to go back and kind of reflect on this geometry a little bit one more time before wrapping up but with that i will end this video and i'll see you guys next time